Is the 39 Steps on the right track for being a great Hitchcock film, or is it a major misstep? Find out today on Really Old Movies. Welcome to Really Old Movies. I'm your host, Harrison Scullin. And today I'll be discussing The 39 Steps from 1935 by director Alfred Hitchcock. So I decided to do another Hitchcock film. Uh, He has over 50 movies and I've been wanting to see all of them. And this one was available for streaming. And like last week, you know, I did Jamaica. And so I wanted to do another one that seemed a little bit different than that one this week. And so some essential movie details. This is loosely based on the 1915 novel of the same name. And due to the film not having its copyright renewed, it has fallen to the public domain. And as a result, there are many versions of this movie, just like with the Jamaica Inn. Criterion, however, has a complete version of the movie. And that's the version I saw on HBO Max. And this is the best version you're ever going to see of it. Now, Hitchcock himself, he considers this to be one of his favorite films to have worked on. And even world-famous actor and director Orson Welles, who's not in the movie, but just after watching it said it's a masterpiece, one of the greatest movies he had ever seen. All right, so the basic plot for The 39 Steps. Richard Hannay, he's on the run from the police due to the murder of a woman in his house. The thing is, he's actually innocent of the crime. He did not commit it. But that is only known to the audience, not to any of the other characters. Everyone thinks he's guilty of the murder so he's trying to scramble across to europe though because before she died the woman warned him that some spies are trying to steal the 39 steps which are some important government information of england and so he's traveling around he gets to scotland where she tells him to go to find and learn about the 39 steps before these spies could get a hold of it and it's just a crazy suspenseful film with all kinds of twists and turns and it's a very fascinating, very interesting plot. And as such, I gave the plot a four and a half out of five. I thought it was a very good story in true Hitchcockian fashion. You have a wrongfully convicted man on the run. You have the cold blonde lead actress. You have many twists, such as the man Hannay meets in Scotland was actually the villain of the movie he's supposed to look out for. I also like that the basic premise of this movie, the basic structure of it, was used over and over again, but kind of changed a little bit in other Hitchcock films, such as North by Northwest, where in that one as well, ordinary man accused of a crime he didn't commit, and he eventually assumes the role of a hero or an agent to take down the enemy. So as such, I love the plot. Really good storyline. Now in regards to acting, I thought it was fantastic. I gave it a 5 out of 5. I love the bickering and the banter between Pamela and Richard Hannay. I thought they were hilarious together. And I also really liked the main villain, Professor Jordan. He was excellent. And honestly, even some of the minor characters, like the innkeeper and his wife, they were hilarious. You know, she smacks her husband for giving the enemy spies alcohol after store hours are closed, which kind of shows how different time was back then. So anyways, really good acting. Loved it. Now, in regards to directing... 5 out of 5, all across the board. Once again, this is a film that has all the Hitchcock tropes, and they're all set, and they're all ready to go. Uh, And considering this is his 22nd film, he is truly a master of the art of cinema at this point. And it's much more of his style than last week's film, Jamaica Inn. That one did not feel like him at all. This one does. This one feels right up his alley. All right, now cinematography and special effects, I gave a a 3.5 out of 5. The sets were pretty basic, as was the cinematography. Nothing too suspenseful in regards to the shots. However, I was very impressed in how they kept the professor, his hand, uh, he's missing a finger. And I was very impressed how they were able to keep that away from the audience for so long. Because Hannay was told to look out for a man missing half a pinky. And when he reveals himself, it's a crazy suspenseful moment because he pulls out a gun at the same time in regards to music i give it three out of five i thought it was good it was a good score very suspenseful but 
not too crazy, not too different. It wasn't utilized as much. So overall, that brings my letterbox score to a 4.2 out of 5, which I round to a 4 out of 5. Great movie, though I was a little disappointed with how it ended. It's pretty anticlimactic, but it was also pretty funny how uh, dark it is. And the the film ends where there's a man, he's like a vaudeville actor, he can memorize all kinds of facts and knowledge. And it's revealed that he actually knows what the 39 steps are. It's not a physical, tangible thing you can hold on to. He's actually the main thing. He has it all memorized in his head. And so he reveals the 39 steps, what they were, and then he dies. And then the film ends right after that. You know, it kind of just fades out. Now, I will say... I did like, though, that the camera kind of zoomed and focused on Hannah and Pamela. They started holding hands. But again, that that's pretty anticlimactic. You know, does Hannah get cleared of his charges? I assume he does, but still, it, it's kind of anticlimactic, but that's just me. But overall, love the movie. Highly recommend it. I especially recommend it if you're a fan of North by Northwest. Another great Hitchcock film, which is which is my one of my favorites of all time. So overall, to answer the initial question, is this a Hitchcock masterpiece or is it a misstep? I think this is on the right track of being a great Hitchcock film. Uh, I highly recommend it if you're a huge fan of his. I also recommend it if you're a fan of suspenseful movies. This is definitely way ahead of its time. We have to remember there weren't too many sound movies at this time. This is 1935. Sound movies were relatively new, and they were able to do a very suspenseful and great film with pretty good sound effects. That's very impressive stuff that they were able to do. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode, and make sure to subscribe to our Instagram and Facebook at Really Old Movies, where you'll get behind-the-scenes information about the week's particular film. New podcasts will be released Fridays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And make sure to check us out on YouTube as well. Tomorrow, which is March 5th, I'll be having my second live stream about my top 10 1930s movies. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been Really Old Movies. I'm your host, Harrison Scullin. Take care.